martyr, become very sick. Because of various circumstances. So delivery was not possible. Natural delivery was not possible. So it had to be taken out through cesarean. Because the question arose whether the people should be taken alive or let the baby and the mother should die. That was a decision. That was the situation faced by another people. And at that time, maybe good surgeon, they said, let us first try to take out the baby so that through cesarean, so that it can be alive. In other words, Nagaland was born, not naturally, but by Cesarean. And we thought that only the people would be alive, but mother also. She was unconscious. So when delivery was taken through Cesarean, the mother didn't know whether she has given birth to the baby or not. That is the reason why, even today, some people say, they are thinking that they have not given birth to the child. Whereas the people have grown up, now 60 years, now. and yet there are people who are still waiting, waiting, the bird of God, the, the child. That is the difference which we thought to know. Secondly, all the states in the country, these were reorganized to the recommendation of the state recommendation committee on linguistic basis. But Nagaland is the only state in the country for the first time after independence, it was created through political negotiation at prime minister level. Why? Because government of India has recognized the uniqueness of Naga political history. It was at that time, people were talking about big states. But at that point of time, when negotiation took place, it has to be agreed upon. And it was, Nagali is the only first state which was created through political agreement. Right. And that is called a separate status. And not only that, in order to protect our religious practices, social practices, even land, our modern land, 371A is there. I was reading some uh, article, step by step. It was in the, advice, on the advice of and no, we were in the drafting committee. We have taken it out from nine point agreement between NSC and through upper high in 1947. And we converted it into constitutional provisions. It was not an advice of anybody, but it was the drafting committee appointed by the Naga People's Convention. The 371A, land and its resources. This was included, and to our great surprise and happiness, the government of India has recognized this provisions, 371A, and this is the only provisions for Nagaland only, and that is the peculiar status 
of Nagaland today. Now, every name, Nagaland, which is very dear to our heart. Because in our youth, during this political movement, the youth used to sing, God bless Nagaland. God bless Nagaland. Not Nagaland. God bless Nagaland. And this is designed, shaped, and keep in print by Naka National Council. And this was formalized Christian on 1st December 1963. No other person than Dr. Radha Krishnan, the president of India. Since then, Nagaland has been officially, politically, as traditionally recognized as Nagaland. And Nagaland become very important political entity in the Indian constitution. On the, from that day, Nagaland has appeared at the map of the world. Nagaland has been recorded as a separate entity within the Indian Union in all the records of the world. But today, some people are even challenging the identity, the political entity of Nagaland. Honorable members, should we not be alert to this? Because in today's world, there are so many elements without understanding the sanctity of Another land. They want to challenge this one. But I'm telling you, another land was purchased by the precious blood of the people of another land. Remember, it was purchased through our blood. And therefore, we should not allow any people, any element, to disturb to tarnish the sanctity of our dear Nagaland. Now I would like to tell you why Naga People's Convention was formed. Why? Today, many a time, especially younger generation, without knowing the situation at that point of time, talking so much about against city point against our people's convention. But there was a time in the 50s because of armed conflict between the Indian security forces and the terrorists of the Naga underground. Then what happened? Houses were burned, granites were burned, remaining villages were group and together. If the culture was denied, open was also denied. Men forced were deadly engaged and never forced. And the rest were put in jail. Now my people at that time, no food, no no cultivation. If it makes no one to look after. Meeting friends, transmission. Are different people. Now, pressure from Indian security forces. And they're completely cut off from the people because of stockaded our villages. And when the villagers didn't have anything to eat. And when villagers could not go out of the village. Naturally, our character of the underground people, they are much more hit harder than the overground. At that point of time, Naga people suffer. The 
they face troubles and difficulties. And our people live in that condition. On Lord, on her, on love, on care by our shared world. And we're really standing on a shadowy borderland. Where to go? Whether left or right or front or back. And at that point of time, the Naga political movement was on the verge of collapse. And after shedding so much of blood and tears and sacrifices,